In this video for Computer Science 9618, we're going to be talking about dictionaries. We're going to be talking about what they are, how they work, and most importantly, programming a dictionary to get you ready for your paper four exam if it is to appear. So what is a dictionary? Well, a dictionary is a collection of items where each item has a key and a corresponding value. Now, a key is unique. It can only appear once in the dictionary. You think of it as a primary key for those of you who have done SQL. Now, it is the key that allows us to find an associated value very quickly. Think of a standard dictionary, the one filled with words. You look up the word and you find the definition. The word would be the key, the definition, the value. A contact list on your phone. The name would be the key and the phone number or the address or the contents, whatever it may be, would be the value. But why would we use it? Well, it provides an efficient way to store data and then retrieve that data based on those unique keys mentioned previously. This allows fast lookups. And when we say fast lookup, we're talking about direct access through a hashing function and using a hashing table. Now, it offers flexible data storage. You can store any type of data that you want to. It's not limited to just one type of data. You can use any type uh, you want. It's also dynamic. We can add new data without a predefined size. Now, because each key is unique, this prevents the possibility of duplicated data. And there are many real life examples of uh, different organizations and different companies that use dictionaries. So what are some of those real life examples? Well, error codes. The code that handles errors can use dictionaries to map error codes and their descriptions. Also, it can map how those errors are handled. We have a key and we have a value. Translation apps. A user types a word in their native language and that key is mapped to the language they are translating to. It's mapped to that foreign language word that they translate to. The domain name system server. The URL is mapped to its corresponding IP address. When you type it in, it's not going to go by index by index by index looking for that. It's going to use a quick, fast lookup. So it uses a dictionary using a hashing function. Contact list. When you search for a name, in the dictionary, it allows quick retrieval of the details for the contact. Game stats. Dictionaries are used to keep track of players' stats, updating their scores, their achievements, and inventory in the game. Now, all of these examples use a key, and each key has a value. That is how dictionaries work. But let's go ahead and program one so we can see it in action. We're ready to create our dictionary. So we're going to do dim for dimensionalize. Then we need to give our dictionary a name. I'm going to call mine students. I'm going to fill my dictionary with students and I do as new dictionary. I open my parentheses. There are two values that we need to put inside the parentheses. It needs to know what is the data type of the key and what is the data type of the value because remember dictionaries have unique keys and each unique key is associated with a value. So I'm going to do my key of integer. That's going to be my student ID. What is going to be the data type that is tied to that student ID? That's going to be a student's name. So I'm going to do that as a string. We now have a dictionary. Now we need to add items to the dictionary. And remember, we said a dictionary is dynamic. We can add items, we can remove items, and it will auto size because it is not static like in an array. It is dynamic. So we're going to do students dot add. Dictionaries do have a dot add method. It needs two things. It says, okay, your, your key is going to be of the integer data type. So that's going to be the student ID. The value is going to be of the string data type. And I said for my dictionary in this example, I'm tying a key to the name. So I'm just going to add three students here. It does not have to be in order because remember we said it is going to find the value based on a hashing algorithm by looking for that key. So we'll be searching for students uh, in a minute. So one, two, five, and we'll add uh, Cecil. There we go. We have 
populated our dictionary with three students here. We can put as many items as we want. The next thing we need to do is we need to traverse through this di dictionary item by item, make sure we're getting the correct key and that for each key we get, we're getting that associated value. Now, when you use an enhanced for loop, you're gonna use for each. Now, the common practice is to create a singular uh, version of your dictionary. So my dictionary is filled with students. What's the singular form of students? That would be student. So I'm doing that as a key value pair. Now, it wants to know, okay, what is the key value pair that you're creating for the student? Well, that's gonna be my data type that I had up here of integer. And that v value for each key is gonna be a string. It wants to say, okay, in what dictionary are, am I gonna find this key value pair? I'm gonna find it inside by dictionary students. The enhanced for loop closes out with next, just like a standard for loop does. The difference between this and a standard for loop is a standard for loop, you can start I or the index anywhere you want. In a for each loop, you don't need an index, but it is gonna traverse from the beginning all the way to the end. That is the difference between an enhanced and standard for loop. So what I wanna do is I wanna output their ID. So I'm gonna do ID, I'm gonna put the ampersand. Now, how do I get this key? Well, what is my variable that I just created as a key value pair? That's gonna be student. And I know the student has both a key and it has a value. So I just output the key. I'm also going to output their name. So I'm going to do name, put a space after that number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an ampersand student dot value. Each item in the dictionary has its unique key associated with a value. These keys, because they're unique, they're not allowed to repeat. This one, two, three, one, two, four, or one, two, five, it cannot be repeated. The values are allowed to repeat. They don't have to be unique, but the keys do. Let's go ahead, let's save this, let's run it, and we should see the ID and the name outputted, and we do. We see the ID of Andre is one, two, three. What corresponds to the key of one, two, three? That would be Andre. Here we have the ID, another key, one, two, four. Was it associated with 124? That is Bobby. Then I have ID 125. What is associated with 125? That is Cecil. We are not looking up the name. It is based on the key, based on this ID number that we have created. Now, what if we're looking for one student and we don't want all the students? How do we handle that? If we're looking for the student, we can do that by using the key. So what we're gonna do here is we've created a variable called search ID. I'm gonna give the user a simple prompt. I'm gonna say enter the ID. I need the key from the user. I'm gonna store that key that they're entering into search ID. Now, usually what you would do with an array or an array list, you would tra start traversing through each entry index by index but the dictionary doesn't use an index. It uses a key and each key has an associated value. So I don't need to use a for loop here. I simply use an if statement, if students contains the key, contains what key? What the user entered, which is search ID. If it contains that key, we're gonna say ID was found. Then we're gonna output the value because we found the key and it's gonna output the associated value. So I'm gonna do console.writeLine. I'm gonna do name. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do students. What am I outputting? Not one. I'm not doing it by the index. I'm doing it by the key, which is search ID. We'll put in an else statement in case we enter something and make a mistake. ID not found. All right, let's go ahead and save this and let's run it. So we have our for loop still uh, outputting, which it needs to because we didn't adjust it. And it says, enter the ID. Let's say we're looking for Cecil, which has the ID 125. It's gonna look through the dictionary 
not entry by entry, but it's going to take that key, it's going to do its hashing algorithm, whatever that may be, it's built into the dictionary, and it's going to find that associated value, which is Cecil. We can see the ID was found, and it outputs the name Cecil. Notice we did not traverse through the dictionary entry by entry. We took the key and we saw if it contained the key. If it does have the key, it's going to use a hashing algorithm to output the value that is associated with that key. This does not work based on the index. Let's say I change this to a 1. If I run this, let's say we're looking for Bobby, 1, 2, 4. You may be saying Bobby would be at index 1, which is not true at all. Because you may be saying Andre's at index 0, Bobby's at index 1, Cecil is at index 2. But if I try to output it using an index, it crashes. Because it's going to say, hey, we're looking for the key 1. It doesn't exist. It doesn't know how to output it. So what we want to do is put search ID back in here. There we go. One more parentheses. There we are. And now it will work. So let's do it again. Let's look for uh, the key uh, one, two, three. Looking for Andre. I can't remember who we just looked for. There's Andre. It looks for the key. If the dictionary students contains the key search ID, which is what the user entered, we're going to output the value that is associated with the key. If you want to remove a student, you're going to use the dot remove method. Let's say we want to get the key of a student we want to remove. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of, we're still going to do enter the ID and we're going to call it search ID. Then what we're simply going to do, we're going to do if students dot contains the key, contains what key? Search ID. Then what are we going to do? Well, then what we're going to do is we're going to do students dot remove. What are we moving? The one, the entry associated with the key, search ID. So then we're going to do a little message. We have removed the student. And then we'll use an else statement, console.write line, student not found. Then what we're going to do is we're simply going to copy and paste this enhanced for loop here. That way we can see that the student has been removed. So let's go ahead and run it. So enter the ID. Let's get rid of Bobby. Type in 124. We have removed the student. Then we output. Notice Bobby's entry is now gone, both his key and his value. When we remove this key, the value is also removed. Bobby doesn't appear here again. It's very important when you're removing a student that you are doing it based on the key. If you are using a for loop going entry by entry from beginning to end, you are defeating the whole purpose of a dictionary. Remember, the purpose of a dictionary is for a fast lookup. It uses direct access, also known as using a hashing algorithm. It doesn't start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. It, it, so if you're creating a for loop, traversing, looking for something specific, you're not using the intended purpose of a dictionary. Now, what we just did was we used a key and we used its associated value. We used integer as our key data type and string as our value data type. But what if I wanted to do objects and use object-oriented programming with a dictionary? Well, you can do that. But if a dictionary has a key that corresponds to a single value, how could I have a key map to more than one attribute of an object? Well, the key would map to the object and not the attributes. So let's take a look at how you can use a dictionary with object-oriented programming. All right, for object-oriented programming, we know we need a class. I'm going to call mine student. Now, students have more than just an ID, but we can also record the student ID. So I'm going to do that as an integer. I'm also going to do their name as a string. I'm going to do their grade as an integer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do their major as a string. When we create an object and put it in a dictionary, the object is going to be tied 
to these four attributes because remember an object contains its own set of attributes. I'm going to go ahead and create the constructor that's going to accept all these values. So I'm going to do by val. I'm going to do s as uh, integer for the student ID. I'm going to do by val in for the name. That's going to be a string. I'm going to do by val g as an integer for the grade. I'm going to do by val m as a string for the major. All I'm going to do is take these parameters and put them inside each attribute. So student ID is going to be equal to S. Name is going to be equal to N. What am I putting inside of grade? The parameter G. What am I putting inside major? The parameter M. Now, what I'm also going to do is create a print details uh, method so we can output everything. So public sub, I'm going to call mine print details. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to output each of these attributes for the object. So I'm going to say ID. I'm going to output that student ID. Console.write line. Not only am I going to output the ID, I'm also going to output their name. I'm going to output their grade. So that's what was next. Just to keep it in order, just so it's my code is uniform and a little easier to read. Console.write line. The last thing I'm going to output is their major. There we go. The object oriented uh, programming uh, class that we created, the custom class we created with the attributes constructor and our print details method is done. We're ready to move down to the main part of our program and create a dictionary with an object. So I'm going to go ahead and create the same dictionary name, dim students, as new dictionary. Now, I need my key data type. That's going to be of integer. I'm still going to use that student ID. But how do I output the ID, the name, the grade, and the major? Well, I'm going to do that based on my custom data type, my custom class, student. Now we can add some students. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do students.add. I'm going to add the ID number. So I'm going to do Andre first, one, two, three. And now what I can do is I can instantiate an object, a new student that has an ID, has a name, has the grade level. So the grade level, let's say they're in uh, year 12. And that has also their major, which we'll say is computer science. Now that red line is gone. I can add another student. We can add Bobby, who has an ID of 124. Even though, yes, uh, the ID is an attribute, I can also use it as a key because I know the ID is going to be unique. 124, that was Bobby. We'll say Bobby is in year 11. We'll say Bobby is majoring in mathematics. Then we're going to do it again. Students.add 125. We need to put Cecil in there. New student 125. His name is Cecil. We'll say Cecil is in uh, year 12 as well. So I'm going to make sure we do that right. And then we'll say he's majoring in physics. So just like that, we have added the value to this dictionary students using object-oriented programming. What we need to do now is we need to traverse through all the entries to make sure it outputs appropriately. Now we're going to use an enhanced for loop to output everything. So we're going to do for each and I'm going to call it this time item. I can't call it student because, well, that's the name of my class. So we're going to do for each item as a key value pair of what is my key? It's an integer. What is the data type of my value? That's going to be student. What am I looking in? I'm looking inside my student's dictionary. Now I'm going to do item dot value. Then to print out all the attributes, then I'm going to do my get or print details is what we called it. So now I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it and I'm accessing each item here inside the dictionary. I don't want to just do item.printdetails because I'm traversing through my dictionary students. So I got to do item.value.printdetails. If I, if I just do item. 
print details, notice it's not, it's, not, it's not working for me. If I just print, it's not working. But if I do item.value, what is the data type of my value? That student, well, that has the access to print details. So we run it and we can see the ID. Oh, I don't like that name. We need to fix that. So we're going to go right back up here because we want to make it to, we want it to look uniformed. Let's put a space. Let's keep some professionalism here. Make it look good. Ah, much easier to read. ID is one, two, three. The name is Andre, grade 12. Next, and, oh, and his major is computer science, which is correct. The ID of one, two, four, that's going to be Bobby, who's in year 11, majoring in mathematics. The ID of one, two, five belongs to Cecil, who's in grade 12, who's majoring in physics. Now, what if we were looking for a specific student to output their details? How do we do that? All right, so we're going to have our search ID as integer, just like we did previously. We have the prompt, enter ID, and then search ID equals console.readline. So all I need to do now is I need to check to see if it's inside the dictionary. If students dot contains the key, what key? Search ID. Then what we need to do is we need to output that student. Now, this one is going to be a little differently because the object needs to be able to access all the details. So what we're going to do is we're going to dim temp student as student, not new student. We just want to create a temporary student object. And what do we want to load into that temp student? Well, we want to load students search ID because remember, we're getting that value and the value is tied to all these attributes that we had up here. Because it's tied to all those attributes, I want to put that inside temp student. Then all I need to do is I need to call that print details. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put back this console.readline because I don't need to mess with that at all. I'm going to do temp student dot print details. Then I'm going to throw in an else with a console.write line. And I'm going to say, uh, student not found. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and run it. All right, there is all our students right there. We're going to look for the ID. So let's look and output Bobby. When we type in 124 and we hit enter, it's a, it should find that key in our dictionary and output the corresponding value. Remember, the corresponding value are all four of these attributes, because what is the value data type? It's of student. And you can see it outputs it perfectly. That is how you use dictionaries, and that's how you can tie object-oriented programming into dictionaries. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to take a moment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.